Hey everyone, and welcome to the questions associated with the lead time bias versus lane time bias video. As usual, I recommend you pause the video, attempt the question on your own, and then come back and watch the remainder of the video to see whether you did it correctly. So in this case, we're asked to name the bias for the following two situations. Situation one is that a study is conducted to assess the impact of PSA screening on prostate cancer survival and finds that screening is associated with improved survival. However, Further analysis finds that treatment for prostate cancer is ineffective in the setting of pre-symptomatic disease. So again, if we think of a patient's um, life course, and we say here, they don't have the disease. Here they are, they have pre-symptomatic disease. Then they develop symptomatic disease and uh, death. So in this situation, we see that treatment is ineffective in the setting of pre-symptomatic disease, meaning that even if we detect somebody with pre-symptomatic disease, which can be done with a screening test, we're not going to be able to actually change this progression from pre-symptomatic disease to symptomatic disease. And therefore, what this situation is implying is that, you know, even though patients who are detected through screening live longer than those who are detected through symptoms. It might just be because we're detecting these patients earlier in their course, but not actually changing the course of disease, right? Because these pre-symptomatic patients detected through screening still go on to develop symptomatic disease and have the same exact course. So this is a situation that's illustrating lead time bias. And it's called lead time bias because this, um, this time is lead time. It's, it's this artificial amount of time that we're getting before symptom onset that is contributing to this apparent improved survival among those detected with screening tests compared to detected through symptoms. But again, the whole problem with lead time bias is that we're not actually changing this progression from pre-symptomatic to symptomatic disease to death. So we're not actually changing the course of disease. The second situation is saying, a study is conducted to assess the impact of mammography on breast cancer survival and finds that screening is associated with improved survival. However, further analysis finds that cases detected through screening are more likely to have genetic mutations associated with slower progression of disease. So in this case, what it's basically saying is that patients, who, um, patients whose cases are detected through screening are more likely to have slowly progressive disease. And we remember that when we're doing screening tests, you know, if we have three patients, patient one, two, and three, um, and these are their kind of time courses for the disease, that when we're doing a screening test, we're taking a cross-sectional slice through time. And that because we're taking these cross-sectional slices through time, we're more likely to pick up indolent forms of disease or more slowly progressive forms of disease. And that is the length time bias that we spoke about in the lecture. And that would be something I'd be concerned about in this case, because we find that cases detected through screening are more likely to have a slower progression of disease. And therefore these um, screening detected cases are more likely to be these indolent, slow growing cases that you know, would have had improved survival even if they were detected symptomatically. You know, it's just that the screening test is kind of selectively picking out um, these kind of less severe, more indolent forms of disease, making it appear as though screening is improving survival when in reality, it's just picking up these um, cases that would have had improved survival anyway. Um, if you had trouble with this, uh, with these questions, I recommend going back and watching the associated lecture. As always, please like, comment, subscribe and good luck.